Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. This is On Air with LHAG. We are very pleased to have with us today Mr. Lim Heng Singh, a partner from our Employment Practice Group. He was also the former chairman of the Industrial Court and a former SOXO Appellate Board member. Mr. Lim, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Lina. Hi, hi everyone. So, Mr. Lim, uh, being um, the former chairman of the Industrial Court, you are exactly the right person to be um, explaining to us a bit about industrial relations in the landscape of the recent pandemic. I just want to start off straight away by talking a bit more about corporate reorganizations, which are part and parcel of day-to-day uh, -day business. Can you explain a bit more as to what amounts to corporate reorganization and in what scenarios would corporations undertake reorganizations? All right, Lina. Uh, let me start by saying that the right to organize a business in its own best interest is every uh, employer's prerogative. We call it the management prerogative. From there flows the right to reorganize whenever they face challenges to the business. For example, when a business needs to improve because it wants to improve its bottom line, it wants to improve on its return on investment, the ROI, then inevitably they will try to reorganize the business so that they achieve the purpose of economy and of uh, efficiency. Mm. Uh, more seriously, we also have situations when companies want to realign re their businesses or their organization and they want to take a different direction. That means again they have to restructure their businesses sure. and that involves reorganization. Yes. Um, having said that, we have now, for example, the COVID-19 pandemic and we are seeing lots of businesses having to take a serious look at the businesses mm. to survive and to sustain the businesses and this again calls for restructuring or reorganization. That brings me to my second question, zooming in a bit more into the industrial relations landscape. How are reorganization what are the implications of reorganizations from the industrial law perspective? When companies reorganize, uh, one of the most important areas they want to address is cost because um, that is a major part of their uh, business expenses. Ine inevitably then this leads to staff having to be reorganized and this can happen in staff movements. Mm. Staff can be transferred, can be redesignated, some might be sent to another organization within the large organization of the company. Some may have to be retrenched. Of course, retrenchment is always the worst case scenario and most employers will, while trying to sustain the business, try to ensure that livelihoods are secured. That means to ensure that an employee's security of tenure is uh, maintained. So this is a very difficult balance. Huh? Mm. To maintain the business, at the same time to maintain livelihoods. Somewhere along the line, uh, a decision has to be made and employees ha are affected. This might lead to disputes because employees who are affected may consider that an action taken by the company may not be fair, may not be in line with the best industrial relations practices and this can be escalated to the industrial court. Right. You mentioned that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought along with it, um, of course, um, an economic crisis. How has this um, affected corporations and businesses? Are they now more likely to undertake reorganizations? And um, if so, what are the impacts on industrial relations? Yes, we're seeing a lot of that happening now. Uh, companies have started by salary cuts, they look at benefits and start trying to adjust benefits so that their cost of employment is reduced. Companies have also started looking at cutting working hours mm. and work days so that the cost of employing staff on those days will be reduced. In your view, how has the current economic crisis brought upon by the COVID-19 pandemic affected the industrial relations landscape as compared to other financial crises that we faced? That's a very interesting question, Alina. Um, we had two previous financial crises in 1997 and 1998. That was called the Asian financial crisis. Mm. Ten years later, almost to the dot, huh, there was this uh, global financial crisis happening over 2007 and 2008. But those were strictly economic financial uh, crisis. Here, super added to that financial crisis, we already had some downturn issues, right? 
now we have uh, the COVID-19, which is uh, health and safety uh, considerations as well. Mm. That has led to all kinds of measures being taken to contain the pandemic. We had the MCO, we had the CMCO, now we have the RMCO. Now, this imposes lots of restrictions on how businesses are done. And that has led to a very different scenario right. because now you find that uh, work and also operations of businesses are severely impacted. Mm. We also see now the uh, phenomenon of working from home mm -hmm. and uh, that creates a whole different industrial relations climate. How does, for example, one monitor employees in the workplace? Mm. Uh, we had a very interesting uh, situation presented to us. Here's a working housewife who has to work from home, WFH, right? Yeah. And she has a son who has to study from home, SFH, study from home. Yeah. Right. Now, she has only one laptop, and that is a company issued laptop. Mm. Her son needs to have access to the online laptop classes. for online classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, she had no choice, but she let her son use the laptop. This was discovered and it became an issue, right? Because there are strict rules about using company uh, facilities, mm. especially laptops which are very sensitive, especially in this case where there was confidential information. Mm -hmm. So it became an issue and we had to advise our client. Ha hope, uh, thankfully, it ended well. Mm. Uh, there are likely to be other issues like this, yeah. similar kind of problems. Yeah. yeah, it brings about a whole new set of issues that exactly. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't have sort of experienced in your recent um, experience in practice, I assume. Not at all. But uh, we expect this to happen probably, you know, and uh, in the next uh, even few months, you know, mm. because uh, there's a time limit for employees to take up cases to the industrial court, sure. they have to file the complaint within 60 days. Uh, 90 days is if they want to challenge a decision at the high court, right? So in this 60 days period, uh, or even now, we can already expect to see some of these uh, issues being escalated up the industrial dispute resolution mechanism. Hmm. Yeah. All right, that was very interesting, Mr. Lim. Thank you so much for sharing with us your case studies and your own personal experience on, on, on issues relating to uh, working from home and retrenchment and all that. Thank you. Yeah. So now we want to move on to the fun part of the session. Mr. Lim, it's called Rapid Fire Session. We want you to answer as many questions as you can within a 30-second period. The record to beat is Inchit Magat's record and he managed to answer 13 questions in 30 seconds. Okay. So, are you ready? What a surprise. <laughs> I, I, I have to have some incentive, right? If I want to try to beat my gut. Sure. You, we will get you a hat which says winner of rapid fire sessions. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Let me, let me put my best shot. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Black or white? White. Favorite food? Satay. Talking or texting? Texting. One word that starts with E. Employment. Last time you went to the cinema? Oh, six months ago. Quality or quantity? Quantity. One favourite song? One favourite? Song. Song. Oh, let it be. Uh, formal or casual? Casual. One item you cannot live without? My wife. Oh, not item, sorry. Uh, does it count? Can? Oh, my handphone. Oh, fine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, Mr. Lee, we've run out of time. Oh, yeah, I should have asked a question. And you have managed to answer 10 questions within oh, dear, 30 if seconds. I didn't ask the question, which yeah? is not bad. Well done, Mr. Lim. <laughs> so I don't get my head. No, apparently not. <laughs> but you are close. Uh, you'll probably get second place. We'll see how okay. the next guest does. All right, thank you, okay. Lina. That was thank very you. nice. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us today. This has been On Air with LHAG. We will see you again next Friday. Bye. Bye.